Hello, I'm Eric Roby. And I'm Carla Schaefer, and this is the Anne Arundel County Week in Review. Making headlines this week. The yellow containers you see all over the county are getting bigger, and our recycling is getting better. Four years ago, we asked residents to recycle more often, and they have. Now more improvements are on the way. County Executive John Leopold announced this week that he will take action on changes recommended by a citizen advisory committee to get even closer to the goal of 50% recycling countywide. The committee's top finding was that the county should go to a once a week trash pickup instead of twice a week. The reason? With one recycling pickup day and two for garbage, sometimes recyclables would get mixed in with the garbage on the second pickup day. And with more and more people recycling, the amount of household garbage left at the curb has been shrinking. County Executive Leopold said, the change could trim costs on trash collection and also boost the recycling rate even more. The new schedule will take effect this summer. The county executive said, we are constantly striving to increase our recycling rate because it makes sense environmentally and financially. Over the past four years, the residential recycling rate has increased from 31% to nearly 40% compared to our goal of 50%. I'm confident that these recommended changes will help us achieve our goal. The county is also offering new 65-gallon carts with lids and wheels in targeted communities as a pilot program. Residents are supersizing their recycling containers in 15 neighborhoods so far, and will be adding the Riviera Beach area in the next month. For more information, go to www.recyclemoreoften or call 410-222-7951. Old Man Winter has officially taken hold of our area once again, although his wrath hasn't been nearly as bad this year as last when he dumped more than six feet of snow on us. Carla, here's a trivia question for you. How much did it cost the county to remove snow last year? I'll give you a hint. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. I don't know the answer. You don't know the answer? I don't. I thought you knew everything. <laughs> you knew about the Beatles last week. You don't know about snow this week. Well, actually, the cost of those blizzards was more than $15 million. We did receive federal reimbursement for some of that, but it's good to see the weather has been easier on us this year. I'm knocking on our wooden desk, folks, because the Department of Public Works has been very effective in meeting its level of service requirements for the snow we've seen so far this year. They've also received some nice compliments from citizens, including a lady this week from Glen Burnie who baked cookies for one of our road district crews. We do want to let you know some safety tips during snow that will help us get the roads cleared faster. Park all vehicles in a driveway whenever possible. If off-street parking is not available, please work with your neighbors to park all vehicles on one side of the road only. Children should be cautioned to stay clear of the plows and other heavy equipment, and drivers should do the same to allow them to do their work. Clearing of sidewalks and removal of ice is the responsibility of each resident. Remove all recycling containers, trash cans, and other obstacles from the streets. Use patience. Plow operations are prioritized to get motorists moving as quickly as possible. Following a, maintaining a safe following distance on the roadways during slick conditions, maintain lower speeds and turn on your lights to increase visibility. Break gently to avoid skidding. This week, the Anne Arundel County Fire Department responded to 1,433 calls for service. This included more than 1,073 emergency medical calls and 106 fire calls. This week, five people were injured as the result of a motor vehicle collision in the northern area of the county. With me now to tell us more about this incident is Division Chief Michael Cox of the Anne Arundel County Fire Department. Chief? Thanks, Carla. On Saturday, January 8, 2011, at approximately 4 p.m., Anne Arundel County firefighters responded to a reported motor vehicle collision in the area of Marley Neck Boulevard and Tanyard Springs Lane in the Glen Burnie area of the county. The first unit to arrive on the scene reported a four-car collision with entrapment. At that time, fire department paramedics began treating the injured patients at the scene while firefighters prepared to begin extricating the victims who were pinned in the wreckage, utilizing specialized rescue tools known as the Jaws of Life. Also, additional resources were also requested, which included additional medical transport units and a second rescue unit to assist with extrication activities at the scene. In all, it took firefighters about 30 minutes to extricate three trapped occupants involved in the accident. There were a total of five patients injured as a result of the incident. The first patient, a 20-year-old female, suffered life-threatening injuries and was transported to the University of Maryland's R. Adams Cali Shock Trauma Center via Maryland State Police helicopter. A second patient, a 3-year-old female, 
suffered serious injuries and was transported to the John Hopkins Children's Center in Baltimore via ground ambulance. The third and fourth patients, a 21-year-old male and a 60-year-old female, suffered serious but non-life-threatening injuries. They were also transported to the University of Maryland's R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Center in Baltimore via ground ambulance. A fifth patient, whose age and sex was not available, suffered minor injuries and refused services at the scene. Carla? Thank you, Chief. We all appreciate our law enforcement, fire, and rescue personnel because they're dedicated to protecting each and every one of us. But did you know that you can get special training to help your neighbors and your family in the event of an emergency? Our own Brenda Reber, Director of Community and Constituent Services, had a chance to check out CERT training recently. CERT stands for Community Emergency Response Teams. Let's take a look at how this works and send it out to Brenda. Hi, I'm Brenda Reber, and I'm here at the Anne Arundel County Fire Training Academy to participate in CERT training. I'm here with Miranda Raggio and Karen Sank, the leaders of the program. Miranda, can you tell us a little bit about what CERT is? Yes, CERT is, stands for the Community Emergency Response Team Program. It was a federally established program back in the 1980s when the earthquake in California showed that um, community people are the best first responders to any disaster when the professional firefighters and police are overwhelmed. So there's a national program at the community level where individual, lay people are trained to light search and rescue, emergency medical response, um, a little bit about the hierarchy of disaster response and that type of thing. No, thank you. And Karen, can you tell us who can participate with this CERT training? Anyone can participate. Uh, we do actually have some young people here today with their parents. We also um, have we had doctors and lawyers, just anybody that wants to help their communities take care of themselves during an emergency. And we are trying to start a teen CERT program in one of the high schools here in, um, in the county during the summer. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Miranda. Why don't we go get started? And then I step away and aim in case Grace gets into trouble. All right, aim at the base of the fire. It should be good. That's enough. tend to burn because it's demonstration stuff. But it's out. Great. This is Maria Schaefer. She's a president of the PTA at Severn Elementary School. Maria, why did you decide to participate with the CERT training today? Well, I'd like to participate in the CERT training to be prepared. That's what it's all about. Um, I'm not here just representing the school. I'm here representing my neighborhood, um, just personal safety, and um, knowing how to be prepared in case of any disaster, anything that would happen in my area. Wonderful. Thanks, Maria. Let's get back to it. Thank you. If you'd like to get involved in CERT training, call the Department of Emergency Management at 410-222-0600. There is more week in review to come. When we come back, Corporal Brian Flegg and his partners Sito and Sasha will be joining us to talk about the police department's K-9 unit. Take a look at the community event calendar for what is happening around the county. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Good job. Hello, I'm County Executive John Leopold. Accidents caused by drunk driving can be prevented. Only you can make the difference. Drink responsibly and always buckle up. On average, every month, 22 Marylanders die as a result of drunk driving crashes. We don't want to be the designated driver for drunk driving crash victims. But if you choose to drink and drive, we will find you and provide you with a free ride. Make the right choice. Drive sober and always buckle up. Designate a sober driver or we'll, we'll designate, designate one for you. you. And welcome back, folks. Well, after the events of two weeks ago with the incendiary devices that were sent to the governor's office and to the Secretary of Transportation, we thought it would be fitting to bring to you today a very special guest to the show, Corporal Brian Flagg from the Anne Arundel County Police Department. Thanks for having me, sir. Corporal Flagg, thanks for joining us, and thanks for bringing a couple of your friends along. Yes, sir. Now, we understand that uh, 
you know, the Anne Arundel County Police played a very significant role in the events that happened two weeks ago at the uh, at the State House, and then along with the Department of Transportation. Um, tell us a little bit about the unit that we have. I understand we have 13 uh, police officers, canine police officers, yes, sir. that uh, work for Anne Arundel County Police Department. Tell us a little bit about the history of the unit. The, the Anne Arundel County Police Department initiated its canine program in 1964 with one canine, and it operated out of the Millersville complex and covered the entire county. Um, the, ca the canine unit grew over the years, and in 2007, the, uh, the department decided to open up a new canine um, tra training facility located over off the Grover Road complex. State of the art, um, indoor outdoor kennels, training areas for the dogs to work in all aspects, in all facets of their job. And in 2008, that was dedicated um, by Chief Tier. So we operate out of that facility now. We currently have 13 police canines that serve the county, 10 of which are utility dogs. The utility dogs do multiple jobs. They locate offenders, or and they also locate bombs or explosives. I'm sorry, explosives or narcotics. There you go. Um, we also have three specialty dogs. One is an, um, explosives only, one is a narcotics only, and Sasha is our missing person dog. And we understand you've recently received an international certification? I, was, uh, I received accreditation as a trainer with the International Police Work Dog Association. I started working with police canines in the Army in 1989 um, down at Lackland Air Force Base. And when I became a police officer, I was interested in becoming a canine handler. Um, in 1998, I was assigned as a, as a SWAT officer, and mm -hmm. one of my jobs was a explosive dog handler. Um, once that dog retired, I laterally transferred within the division to the canine unit, and I've been working several dogs since that time. Um, well, talking about working dogs, um, the, the dog you have here, Sasha. Sasha, hi. How are you? Good to see you. Do you like being on camera? She's doing yeah. pretty well right now. She's she doing great. She's very well behaved. Uh, Sasha deals with rescues and missing persons and yes, adults. Sir. And uh, you also have another dog, and we'll get to Sasha. We'll talk a little bit about Sasha in a minute. But uh, Cito, a uh, two-year-old German or a Belgian Malinois. Actually, Cito's a German Shepherd oh, from Cito's Slovakia. German Shepherd. Okay. Yes, sir. So he speaks a different language than us, um, but he handles your uh, your explosive devices. Yes, sir. And uh, I understand he was used two weeks ago. Yes, sir. Um, several of our officers were called in to assist um, with the incidents that occurred a couple weeks ago. We were assigned to the districts, and the dogs went in to sniff some of the mail rooms and assist the other agencies with calls for service within the county. Yeah, and luckily we found nothing in any of our mail rooms. We didn't detect anything, any sir. Agencies. But from time to time, uh, they do. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about a time when one of these dogs have actually uncovered some explosive devices? Within the county, we haven't discovered any explosive <laughs> devices, but we have discovered weapons that have been fired that have been used in crimes. Mm -hmm. um, those dogs have gone out to assist after uh, while the investigation is, is ongoing and located weapons that have been, uh, been, been tossed from uh, offenders. Mm. Very good. And we know that um, Sasha and, well, we know Sito is from Slovakia, but we hear that some of your dogs are rescues as well from animal control. Yes, ma'am. Since I've been in the unit, I know there's been almost seven dogs that we've rescued from animal control. Currently, we have um, an explosives detection dog, who is Canine Chesney, who is a rescue from animal control. Um, Canine Cyrus, who is one of our um, narcotics detection dogs, he's uh, from animal control. And then we've had patrol dogs. Um, over the years, um, other explosive dogs, almost all of our specialty dogs are adopted from, from some rescue or from an uh, animal control agency. And i got to ask this, Corporal Flagg, <clears throat> I hear all the stories about canine handlers and the dogs kind of become part of the family. Yes, sir. Now, at Anne Ar Arundel County Police, do you also take these dogs home, and are they part of your family as well? They, as much as they are a part of our family, <laughs> they are law enforcement tools. They do go home with us. They are very special to us. Um, but there are rules with the family. They are um, put away when um, friends of the family come over. Mm -hmm. um, they are police canines, but they are very important to us. Um, they do go home with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. These dogs spend time with our families, and uh, it's, it's a pretty good relationship. Absolutely. Well, Corporal Flagg, thanks for joining us today on the show. Thanks for all the members of your unit for what they do on a daily basis out there, helping to fight crime, find missing people, and keep us safe here in Anne Arundel County. Thank you for having us. Appreciate you joining us. Well, folks, you've seen it here. 13 working dogs, police officers, that help keep Anne Arundel County safe. And you got to meet two of them here today on Week in Review. So, Carla, we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we've got more Week in Review. Good job. It's cold and flu season, and the last thing you want is to be sick or make others sick. 
So here's what you do to stop germs and stay healthy. Cover your cough. Wash your hands after sneezing, coughing, or blowing your nose. Wash with warm water and soap for 20 seconds, and then dry. When you can't wash your hands, use an alcohol-based sanitizer. If you do get sick, stay home. Stop germs, stay healthy. And welcome back, folks. Well, downtown Annapolis is very busy this time of year, and it's not because of any of these boat shows that come into town. I mean, it's way too cold for boating this year, and the ice on the rivers, you're not going anywhere. The 2011 Maryland General Assembly is in session, and this promises to be a tough year for state lawmakers as they continue to address budget shortfalls from the struggling economy. The budget is on everyone's mind, including County Executive John Leopold. This week, he released his priorities for the session, with preventing cuts to local government as the top of the list. But that's not all. He also wants to add transparency to the budget process when it comes to the Board of Education. Several pieces of legislation will require the board to provide more information to the county executive and the county council during budget review. You might also remember the Bear Bear case that got quite a bit of attention here locally and nationally. Last year, a husky was shot by an off-duty federal police officer in a local park. As an animal lover himself, County Executive Leopold felt that the case highlighted the fact that criminal penalties for cruelty to animals were too low. Two proposed bills increased the jail time and fines for cruelty to animals and cruelty using a firearm. Speaking of priorities, County Executive Leopold said, I look forward to working with our delegation to protect the interests of our citizens and fight for the legislation citizens want from their elected officials. Joining us this week in for Mary Felter is Pam Jordan from the Department of Aging and Disabilities to tell us more about an exciting opportunity to learn more about services and support for individuals with disabilities. Pam? Thanks, Carla. Well, I have the pleasure of being in Saverna Park today at Woods Memorial Fellowship Hall. And um, I want to tell our viewers and listeners about a very exciting event coming up on Tuesday the 18th. And I'd like to introduce two of our special guests that are on the show this week. Joining me is Bronwyn Belling, and she is the president of Anne Arundel Women Giving Together. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be with you. Before we talk about the event, um, Tell us more about Anne Arundel Women Giving Together and the mission of the organization. Anne Arundel Women Giving Together is a new women's giving circle. We're actually five years old and organized here in Anne Arundel County. We have about 150 members and our mission is really to, uh, to help improve the quality of life for women and families in Anne Arundel County. And we do this by collecting membership dues from each member. We're now about 150 members strong. And we make grants to nonprofits in the community to help support the needs of our friends and neighbors near us. That's an amazing organization then. And of course, your focus this year is to um, draw some attention to individuals with disabilities. Right. Every year we hold about a half a dozen informational and educational sessions for our members and for the public, and they're really intended to help us understand more about the needs in the county and where our money can make the most difference. And we're making grants. We've actually awarded in, we're about to award uh, $300,000 totally in grants over the last five years. So we're celebrating our fifth anniversary this year. That is just amazing. And what a wonderful way to give back to the community. Well, there is a big event coming up on the um, 18th, on Tuesday the 18th, right here at Woods uh, Fellowship Hall. And um, we have Joanna Clark with us today. Um, Joanna is also on Anne Arundel Women Giving Together in, in that organization. And I know her from the Anne Arundel County Commission on Disability Issues. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. So can you tell our viewers and listeners more about what is going to happen here at uh, the Woods Fellowship Hall next week? Yes, on Tuesday night, uh, which is the 18th of January, uh, from 7 to 8.30, we will have a panel discussion and forum on identifying the roadmap for individuals with disabilities to achieve services in the community. And we'll be covering uh, intellectual disabilities, uh, developmental disabilities, and uh, mental health disabilities. So it will be broad, and we realize the complexity of the topic, but we want to get started to put these issues out in the community and get feedback from the community, and we're hoping a lot of members of the public will please join us. And I understand you have some very interesting panelists at this event. Yes, we do. We have uh, service providers um, from four different agencies and a parent. Very good, very good. And of course, this event is open to the public and free? It is. It's free. 
come in and join us and uh, we'll be delighted to talk with everyone and there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers after the presentation. Very good and the time is 7 to 8.30, correct? That's right and we will have you and another representative from Aging and Disability Services to provide input and information on uh, the way to get services. And we're happy to be there and of course this building is very accessible so anybody who uses a wheelchair is uh, will find it very easy to maneuver through this building. That's right. Well, thank you for joining me, Joanna. Delighted. And Bronwyn, thank you very much, and good luck with the uh, organization. It sounds like you're on a wonderful path. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. And anyone who would like more information can read it on our website at givingtogether.org. Excellent. Well, Carla, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. Reporting from Severna Park for Anne Arundel County Week in Review, I'm Pam Jordan. Thank you, Pam. On January 10th at approximately 10.38 p.m., officers from the Eastern District responded to the Green Tree Exxon located in the 8,000 block of Crane Highway in Glen Burnie for a report of an armed robbery of a business. Join us now as Public Information Officer Justin Mulcahy with further details on the investigation. Thanks, Eric. When officers arrived on scene, they spoke with the store clerk who indicated that a male subject entered the store, purchased items, and then left without incident. Now, several minutes later, the suspect re-entered the store holding a handgun. The suspect then proceeded to demand money from the cash register. The clerk complied with the demands by opening the register and turning over an undisclosed amount of U.S. currency. At that point, the suspect left the store in the direction of the car wash that was next door. Now, numerous officers in a canine unit canvassed the area but were unable to locate that suspect. Now, the suspect in this case is being described as a black male, about 5'10", with an average build, last seen wearing a hat, you can please observe the uh, footage on your screen if you have any tips, certainly contact the police. Moving on now to our second incident that took place on January 9, 2011, around 9.33 p.m. Now that's when officers from the Eastern District were dispatched to the 8300 block of Woodland Road in Pasadena for what came in as a report of a stabbing that just occurred there. Now while en route, officers were flagged down by a male subject in the area of Fairwood Drive and Mountain Road. The subject indicated that the male victim in his vehicle was stabbed earlier. Officers located the 20-year-old male victim inside of the vehicle suffering from multiple stab wounds. And that victim was transported to shock trauma where he was in stable condition. During the course of the investigation, officers located several witnesses and identified a possible suspect. Based on preliminary information, it appears that the victim and the suspect were known to each other and involved in some sort of dispute over money. Fast forward to January 10th after a thorough investigation, the Eastern District detectives applied for an arrest warrant for the aforementioned stabbing suspect that had been identified. Around 6.40 p.m., the Eastern District PAC unit located the suspect and arrested him without incident at a residence in the 300 block of Crandall Road in Severna Park. The suspect is currently being held without bail at the Anne Arundel Detention Center. That suspect is Damian Wayne Blake, age 31, of 303 Crandall Road in Severna Park, Maryland. Now, as always, if you have any information on any incidents on the show, don't hesitate to email, call, or text your tips to Metro Crime Stoppers Hotline. It's, it's available 24 hours a day, toll-free at 1-866-7-LOCKUP, or text message MCS plus your message to crimes at 274-637. You can also visit the website. That's www.metrocrimestoppers.net. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Justin. Well, Carla, it's been a good show so far. We had some very, very special guests here. Two puppies. Yeah, well, more than puppies. That's right. Although one is, is just two years old, so I guess we can still call them has puppies. a lot. No, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> they are police dogs, and they are some of the most important right. tools that a police department can have. I mean, there's so many uses for mm -hmm. a canine, canine dog in, in police work. Not only the bomb sniffing that we saw while they were here, the, uh, the missing persons, the drug dogs, but they're also such an effective deterrent to preventing crime. They are, and they're streets. technically police officers. They are the police county. officers. They mm -hmm. have badges. They don't carry guns. but No, they don't. They bite. <laughs> and they probably hurt when they bite. Um, I think that's more of a deterrent than the guns sometimes. Oh, yeah. Biting from a dog will hurt you. Let's talk a little bit about it. I mean, I saw these dogs. They did some fantastic things up here. Now, I know you have a dog. I do. Tell us a little bit about the fantastic things your dog does. Uh, well, he's not as well trained and definitely would not find a, an explosive device. He sits. Um, he stays when he chooses to. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, right. not quite the same as these dogs. These dogs were impeccably trained. We learned that they train for at least an hour every day. And uh, 
even more so since he lives with these dogs. So absolutely, yeah. well, it's a, it's mm -hmm. definitely a you know that's that's really you know it almost becomes a part of your life when mm -hmm. you're a canine officer. So it was good to have uh, Corporal Flag in, and thank you to all the officers from our canine unit and all our police officers out there doing a great job in Anne Arundel County every day of the week. And when we return. Eric will be joining us from the Week in Review Sports Palace to bring us this week's local sports highlights. Stay right with us. We'll be back. Once they've outgrown their toddler seat, they're still not ready for adult safety belts alone. Four foot nine is the magic number. Until then, kids need a booster seat. Make sure your little pumpkin gets there safely. Visit BoosterSeat.gov. Good day, sports fans, and welcome to the new Week in Review Sports Palace, Fit for a King. We lead off today with some high school hardwood action. Annapolis took on Old Mill Wednesday in a game that would come down to the last seconds. The Panthers jumped out to an early eight-point lead and went into the locker room at halftime with that same lead. In the second half, Old Mill, with distant memories of the 31-point loss to Broadneck just a few days before, found their shooting touch as they started the third quarter with a 14-2 run to take the lead. Brian Hitton finished off the Panthers scoring on a fast break with less than 10 seconds on the clock to give the Patriots a 79-76 win. Joe McCargo led the Patriots with 22 points as they moved to 8-3 on the season and Annapolis Falls to 8-2. Elsewhere, Broadneck continues to dominate as they run their record to 11-1, behind 21 points from Tequan Colbert. They took care of Meade 69-56. Glen Burnie has no problems with Severna Park as they picked up a 59-32 victory. And Arundel moves to 8-3 with a 54-39 win over North County. Well, on the ladies' side, Annapolis has found a balanced offensive explosion as five Panthers were in double digits in scoring. In the first half, the Patriots kept the game close, scoring 20 points in the first half and finding themselves down by only six. The second half looked as if there were two different teams on the court. Old Mill struggled offensively, and the Panthers turned out the scoring with 45 second-half points to go on to win 73-38. Well, the Lady Cougars were looking for win number four on the season as they took on Severn School. Janelle Hollinger and Dejon Gibson had other ideas as they scored 15 and 19 points respectively for Severn to give the Admirals a 68-45 victory over Chesapeake. And in other ladies' action, Severna Park topped Glen Burnie 59-37, and Meade's defense was too much for Broadneck as they fell 47-25. Well, finally today, a perfect sports story to head into an important weekend of football for our Baltimore Ravens. Last week, the Anne Arundel County Department of Recreation and Parks, at the request of County Executive Leopold, challenged the Maryland Department of Agriculture to a team spirit competition. Reckon Parks, led by Week in Review's own Franklin Cheney, pulled out all the stops as they decorated our sportsman statue on Harry Truman Parkway in purple and black. And they even erected a purple gold post to support our Baltimore Ravens. Carla, it's going to be a big game. Yes, indeed, Eric. We hope our Ravens beat those Steelers. And speaking of our local kids, we told you some exciting new changes coming to the county's recycling program. To quote the Whitney Houston song, The Children Are Our Future, Constituent Services Representative Mark Chang recently attended a contest where students created sculptures using recyclable materials. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Mark Chang with Community Constituent Services for Anne Arundel County Executive's Office. I'm out here at Rundle Middle School where they had just finished up the 3D, the third annual Recycling in 3D program. And I'm here with Ms. Kristen Lagana, who's one of the recycling outreach specialists. I just want to ask you, how did the program go? How did the contest go today? We had a great turnout this year. We had 44 projects from over six different middle schools, including Arundel, Bates, Brooklyn Park, Mead, Old Mill South, and Severna Park. 
great. And will you all be doing this next year? We'll definitely be doing it next year. And we encourage any of the middle school um, students in Anne Arundel County to apply. And we encourage you to uh, make some beautiful artwork so we can all see it and enjoy things from the winter and holidays made completely out of recycling. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Let's meet some of the winners here. You were the first place winner, right? Yep. What's your name, young man? Cameron Bolden. Okay, great. And what was your uh, project? Like me shoveling snow and... Okay, well how long did it take you to do it? One day. One day? Okay, well great. Well, great. Well, congratulations. And I'll uh, look forward to it. Hopefully you'll be in there next time. And we have two young ladies here, and you both came in second. It's a team effort here. Okay, it's all about teamwork, right? Uh, what is your name? Kayla And yours? And where do you all live? Jessup. Jessup? Great. Well, and you're in Jessup too? I'm in Severn. Severn, okay. Well, the western part of the county uh, represent here today. Well, congratulations. And what was your project date? Right here. What is it? Right here. Okay. Okay, great. Good. And what was it made out of? Um, we made it out of copper paper, uh, bottles. Okay, great. Well, congratulations. All right, you're welcome. So, here. You're the third place winner? Okay, great. And what's your name, young lady? Okay, good. Where do you live? In Gambles. Okay, so close by then. Okay, great. And what what got you involved in the contest? Well, I'm trying to probably use the next credit thing. Okay. So I could once I can use it because of the neighborhood and why you because last year. So we decided to like give it all the rest of the like going so then now I would Okay. Well congratulations. <laughs> all right, great. Yes, ma'am. And you which an honorable <laughs> You got the honorable mention title, right? Yes. What's your name again? Kinara Martin. Okay, great. And what did you do? I did a bird, Christmas bird. Okay, well, great. Did you like the contest? Yes. Okay, great. All right, were you going to do it again? Probably. Okay. For the folks out there watching this program, what advice would you give them? What piece of advice would you give them to help them uh, encourage them to recycle? Use creativity. Okay, well, congrats. Congratulations. Miss Joanna Tobin, how are you doing? Great, right, great. Right. And you're the chairwoman of the Recycling Commission for Anne Arundel County, correct? The Recycling Advisory Committee. Okay, That's great. Right. Tell me a little bit about that committee. Well, we were uh, chartered about a year and a bit ago by the county executive to come up with some recommendations to help the county up the recycling rate to help them reach the 50-50 goal. And how are we doing? We're doing very well. The goals, the uh, rate's been going up as long as the committee's been meeting, but we put together a report with some ideas that we thought would really help the county keep putting that uh, number up where it needs to be. And uh, the good news is the citizens of the county are very receptive to recycling, uh, but we need to keep working at it. And so 20 citizens have spent the last year coming up with more ideas to uh, get us going. Great. And what did you think about this contest? Oh, this was terrific. Um, I think the most important thing and the most encouraging thing is that young people are really getting the recycling message. And when you see all the incredibly creative uh, entries into a program like this, you realize that the kids get it, they're interested in it, and it's giving them an opportunity to express not only their care for the environment, but also their creativity and their talent. Joanne, I asked a young lady who came up before you, for those folks out there watching this, what piece of advice would you give them to help and encourage them to recycle? I think just look around you and realize that most of what gets finished with its use in your house can be recycled. More can be recycled than not. So when in doubt, don't throw it out. Recycle it. All right. Well, that's a great piece of advice. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. And I would encourage everyone out there to keep on recycling and get those yellow bins filled up. If you need a yellow bin, you can always give a call at Constituent Services at 410-222-1795. Great stuff. Kids really get it when talking about protecting our environment. Absolutely. And it's just good, Carla, to see these kids involved in projects like mm -hmm. this. I mean, I know when I was in school many, many years ago, uh, it was always 
I always learned the best when I was involved. And getting kids involved really will, will make that, that those values stick with them for a lifetime. Definitely, Eric. So it was good. I think, what do you think of my new sports palace? The it's, place is great. It, yes, it is I great. Mean, it's excellent. I've always wanted to be a king. Now I've got my own palace. Yeah. Sports, I mean, what's better? Well, There's yeah. nothing better than that. I, I'm a little jealous. <clears throat> Maybe next week when the bands come, we can have our own musical palace You as well. can have a music palace. <laughs> Your music palace can be over there. Okay. Big game this weekend, Carla. A lot on the line. It's Friday night. Game tomorrow, mm -hmm. 4.30, Heinz Field, Pittsburgh. The town is painted purple. Everything from Baltimore all the way down to Deal. It's purple everywhere. Ravens got a big game. This is one of the biggest games, I think, in the last 10 years. That's what I hear. And I know it's always... A really tough rivalry with the Steelers. But. Oh, we, we go in there to knock some heads, and they come in there to knock some of our heads. So it's going to be a great game. So hopefully you're watching 4.30 on Saturday. Hopefully everybody's watching, and let's go Ravens. We need the victory. And that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode online anytime at www.aacounty.org. Archive episodes are available at blip.tv. And, of course, you can subscribe to the free video podcast at iTunes. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county. We'll see you next week when our guest will be Pandemonia, one of the 11 bands performing at Anne Arundel County's Battle of the Bands on January 29th. We'll take you out with the band performing one of its original songs. Have a great week.